Hello to you guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. Today I thought I would give you a review of the brand new Lady Gaga studio album Chromatica. I thought I would give you a review of this album. You know, on this channel I love to do loads of different things and I really do like enjoying uh, I do like enjoying reviewing um, new albums that have piqued my interest of artists that I like or have albums that I have liked prior. Um, and this seems to be like a really big release for this year. Lady Gaga postponed it until now and we got the release um, a week ago tomorrow it came out. And I've been listening to this album quite a lot. It is Gaga's sixth studio solo album and it comes off the release of Joanne which was her last studio album but then also kind of as well from A Star Is Born which was like the mega remake of the film and had the amazing soundtrack too. So getting this album off that is like completely different. Lady Gaga is really going back to like her dance house pop roots um, which sort of kicked off her career and that really is the main sort of um, genre of this album is very house techno pop uh no no ballads no rock songs so if you are a big fan of that lady gaga sound this probably isn't the album for you however you probably will find something here um i personally am one of those people that love uh lady gaga's ballads and her rock songs or rockier songs like you and i perfect illusion uh to an extent gypsy tracks like that that are a bit more harsher maybe a bit more rockier in sound um, whereas Chromatica is very dance, dance, dance the whole way through, which was Lady Gaga's whole point of the album was so she could just dance through her pain, which has been referenced on so many of the tracks, um, like Rain On Me, for example, one of the, the lead singles since the second single released. Lyrically, the album is probably, if not the most personal Lady Gaga album we've ever got. I really get a sense that she is talking from the heart and I am someone that loves lyrics. I Lyrics are like my number one. If the lyrics are good and I can relate to a song, I'm gonna more, more than likely enjoy the album, which is the case for this album. So the album opens up with the interlude Chromatica 1. These are scattered sort of at different stages throughout the album. You have like the initial, the midway through and then at the end. Um, I like these interludes. I think that my favourite one is the one in the middle where you have this really melodramatic interlude which then flows so well into the song 911. So I really like that one. And I like the one towards the end of the album as well. I'm never going to be like, oh, let's listen to the interlude. But if it comes on, it's nice. I'm not going to skip it because they're like 30 seconds long. So they're quite a nice touch. The first full length song on the album is Alice, which really, really got my attention. I love the aggressive techno beats throughout the the song the lyrics as well i love um again it's about her trying to re to relate to alice from alice in wonderland to try and find her wonderland even though that's not her name it's just a really great way to introduce you to the album and what's to come and it's definitely one of the standouts we then have stupid love which was the lead single for this album stupid love i think is very mixed People either love it or hate it. And I am somewhere sort of bang in the middle. I love the sound of it. I love the the whole production. Um, I just don't really like the lyrical content. It seems very basic, uh, not very awe-inspiring, although I do. It's like a guilty pleasure kind of song. Like I can't help but listen to it when it comes on. And I find myself screaming stupid love, even though... It's like, it's not that good. Third track, Rain On Me, arguably one of the better singles on the track, if not the best, um, was such a mega hit when it came out. Again, the lyrics are really personal for both her and Ariana Grande. You can tell this wasn't just a song where Ariana sent in some vocals and that was that. You can tell this was a really collaborative effort um, and I appreciate that and it just sounds really, really good. Just using Rain as a metaphor, um, for embracing life's hardships and sort of using them to empower you. I like that. And also their, their, their voices together and the whole production is very 90s-esque. This, this album is very uh, 90s pop house infused. Um, 
which is really good. <laughs> she does it really, really well. You can tell that that is where she draws her inspiration from and that she is very well educated in that sort of era. We then have A Free Woman, which is a song that I don't dislike. I don't love it. If it comes on, I'll probably nine times out of ten skip it. It's okay. It doesn't bring me, it doesn't give me that feeling like a lot of the other songs on this album. In conclusion, I'm gonna need more time with this track. It's the same story with Fun Tonight. I feel like these songs go hand in hand of being very safe songs. They're both okay. They're not the best. They're not the worst. Although I think I favour Fun Tonight. I like the lyrics a little bit more. Uh, initially, you see this title track and you're like, oh, this is gonna be a song about having fun tonight. But it's kind of the opposite. She's saying how she's not having fun tonight. She's in like a bad relationship. Um, and I just, I think I, I favour this song more than Fun Tonight just because her vocals are so soaring and she does that shouty thing that Lady Gaga does so well, like in uh, one of my favourite songs off Joanne, Perfect Illusion. It just gives you goosebumps. You just know she's feeling what she's saying. Then have the next track, 911, which is probably one of the most experimental tracks on the record. You have Lady Gaga's robotic uh, vocals, as I mentioned earlier, coming off nicely from that. Uh, interlude. The robotic nature of her vocals really does make sense with the lyrical content um, as it's about her. I think it's like, I think I read because on Spotify you can like swipe down it like gives you a little bit like what she said and it was about her like antipsychotic tablets that she takes and it's all about that and it's sort of about her inner struggles. Her biggest enemy is me is what she says in the song and I really like this song. A lot of people are hating on the song because of the sound and yeah it the sound is different. I really like the beats and the overall production to this one. Plastic Doll is the next track on this album and it kind of falls into the same category as Fun Tonight and uh, Free Woman. Like they're good, they're okay, they're fine, they're safe, they're doing their thing, they serve a purpose. A lot of people are gonna like these songs but for me personally it didn't really stick. Sour Candy is the next track with Black Pink. This is such a short, sweet, punchy dance track and it is exactly what I expected from this album and it's exactly why I love listening to this album is just like, it's like an instant shot of adrenaline when you listen to this song. Um, I think Blackpink are fantastic. Their vocals work so well. They're like softer, sweeter vocals work so well against Lady Gaga's sort of harsher spoken word vocals. Yeah, it's one of my favourites. Enigma, I really like Enigma. I can see how it kind of falls again into that middle ground of not being bad, but not being like amazing. Um, but I really like this song. I like the vocals a lot on it and I do like the production. Um, the lyrics again are sort of on that theme of being otherworldly, being your enigma, um, sort of consciously referencing her Lady Gaga persona as well. Um, I enjoy this one. I do not skip it. I do actually like it. It's one of my favourites. Now we get to probably arguably the most interesting clump of songs in the whole album. We have Replay. I think Replay is my favourite. If I had to pick, if I had to pick a favourite, Replay is the one that I go to. Those vocals on the chorus, I don't know what to do, you don't know what to say. It's so good. When she screams that, I really just get goosebumps listening to it. And especially at like the third, after like the bridge and then it goes into like the final chorus, she is shouting. She is feeling what she is saying. She is frustrated. Um, and it shows and the production and the lyrics, just everything works so well and it's just so good. Um, definitely probably my favourite. This one's going to get me in trouble. Sign From Above is the collaboration with Elton John. Um, this song is strange. I think we can all agree on that. Some people love it, some people hate it. I'm so, I don't hate it, I'm just on the dislike end of the spectrum. I, I feel like the production is very strange. The techno robotic -y synths are weird and I don't think it really does anything for Gaga or even Elton John's vocals. Elton sounds very strained um, and it's just not what I expected for a collaboration with these two mega artists. The chorus and the beat drop is, is okay, I just found it a little bit underwhelming. Um, so it's not one of my favourites. In conclusion, I'm gonna need more time with this track. We have a thousand dubs. This one has definitely been a grower for me. It's very middle of the road. It's sort of in that category of Fun Tonight, Free Woman, uh, Enigma. Just that really like classic middle ground that isn't gonna rock the charts, but it's not gonna 
take away anything from her career. Um, I just feel like some of them could maybe have been removed or re I don't know, revamped a little bit. Um, but this one's sweet. It's a nice song, very middle of the road, but I am finding myself enjoying it the more I listen to it. In conclusion, I'm gonna need more time with this track. And the final full-length song on this album is a Babylon. It probably the Babylon and Replay are my two favourites from this record. It sort of just combines what this album is about, summarises it into one song. It's like a departing message. So when you finish listening to this album, you have that sort of ingrained in you. Um, I really like this one. I like the wordplay on Blabble On and Babylon, or Bab Babble On and Babylon. Um, you know, you can say what you're going to say. I'm just going to keep dancing, vibing, having a great time. There's nothing you can really say. Maybe there once was a time where what you would say would hurt, but now, no, not the case. She seems to master that sort of spoken word, Madonna, Vogue, RuPaul, supermodel-esque very well um, without just parodying it. Um, and it's just fantastic. It's, it's, it's so good and it is so iridescent of the 90s and that vibe and that theme and it just comes together so well that when you have Alice at the start and Babylon at the end and like replay and 911 sort of in the middle, you have these three consistent points throughout the album that don't make it feel like a total drag. Um, because you have some records that just have all their good songs in the beginning and the rest of the record is like exhausting and you have to force yourself to listen to it. That's not the case with this album. I think it's structured very well. It is cohesive, even though the theme of like this chromatica planet world thing gets a bit lost sometimes and isn't very clear. Um, I really love Babylon, so those are my favourite tracks. If I had to go through my favourites, it would be Alice, Rain On Me, 911, Fun Tonight is probably up there too, Sour Candy, Enigma, Replay and Babylon. Um, and then the only one that I really sort of do actively skip every time is Sign From Above and Free Woman. Although I love the message of Free Woman, um, it just doesn't work with me with the production and everything else let me know what you think of this album overall i would give this album a good like three and a half out of five i think it was one of the better um like recent lady gaga projects compared to like art pop and maybe even born this way um i think it's definitely up there with them do i prefer it to joanne probably not do i prefer it to the fame monster probably not but i do think it's up there um, and it's keeping Lady Gaga in the charts relevant as ever, um, doing what she does very well. And I can't wait for the next reinvention of Lady Gaga. She does have that reinvention-esque mind, like Madonna, Prince, Bowie, uh, of always keeping up with the times, keeping it, you know, fresh or calling back to certain things and... Um, yeah, overall, I really do enjoy this album. So let me know what you think, what your favourite songs are, what your least favourite songs are. And if you have any suggestions on what albums I should review next, uh, just comment down below and I will probably do it. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. If you could please like and subscribe, that would be amazing. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. In conclusion, I'm going to need more time with this track.